guys, here is my record as of this recording. And uh, why don't we get right into the video. So now we're going to jump into another play out of the scheme that I run. And obviously this was the first play that we went over, Levels Divide. And as you see, um, I showcase a couple of plays here, I believe. Again, I run no huddle. He's in single high. And right here, I check into Levels Divide again. Snap the ball. Obviously, we are attacking the seam read side. We got the comeback pattern. Okay. And now we're going to get into the play, I believe, that we're getting into in this video. Play number two, quick slants. Okay. And what we do is we are using this against single high, and we are attacking the second defender in. He can never be right. And if we have receivers on the outside who can win against man-to-man -man coverage, then you can run this play against um, any single high type of defense pretty much, man or zone. So here, another example, now he's running man, and we run the same concept, and we are attacking the second defender in. So let's go over this play. It's quick slants. It is a passing concept called Dragon. So definitely go check out my passing concepts folder. I started doing passing concepts, I believe, a couple of years ago. So maybe I will leave a link. If learn passing concepts, guys. That is how you get better on offense, how you simulate a true offense. And it helps you to understand defenses as far as weaknesses and strengths because you learn what passing concepts are designed to do. And then you learn how that interacts with different defenses. And it just helps you to understand, uh, understand the game um, on a deeper level. So the play we're going over is quick slants. We went over levels divide. And we see levels divide is excellent against single high. And what do you know? We have another passing play in the same formation that's excellent against single high. So what does this tell you? This tells you that if someone wants to sit in single high against you, you should have no problems in this particular formation. And this is just with these two plays. And we're going to build on our scheme. Okay, so let's dive into some stuff here. So the whole concept is understanding the defense. So single high, it can be cover three zone. It could be a, a different variant of cover three, okay? But we're just going to deal with the stock coverages so we can better understand the concept. It could be cover three zone or cover one man. Now, if you think about it, if it's cover three zone, what's the outer shell of the coverage? Well, the outer shell of the coverage would be these two corners and the safety, right? These two corners would be playing... Um, outer thirds and their job is to not allow anything to get behind them and it's the same with the safety and obviously they have other responsibilities like the safety is playing in between the hashes if the ball is down the center right okay but th the whole overall idea that I roll with is these guys are gonna play a lot more conservative and the reason why that is is because if they allow someone to blow right by them there is no more resistance to the end zone, right? So like if this player were to sit on a hitch and he's wrong and it's a hitch and go, it's an automatic touchdown. There's no resistance to the end zone. As opposed to this player, if he sits on a hitch, okay, and he's wrong and the guy runs up the seam, yeah, it can be a big play. However, there is another form of resistance behind him, that being the safety, right? So it's not as big as a, of a deal if this guy is wrong on a particular route. So that's what I mean by the outer shell of the coverage having to have to be a lot more conservative uh, in regards to giving up the big play. So with that in mind, this is what this concept is all about, right? If we take this player out of the picture, if he didn't exist, okay, and we were to run a slant pattern, this player would never be able to properly defend that slant pattern if he's a outer third corner, right? Because, again, he's playing a lot more conservative and he doesn't want anything to get behind him, right? The problem is this player is in the picture. But with us knowing that this outer third corner can never um, efficiently defend a slant pattern coming inside, we can utilize that understanding to exploit the second defender in. What we are doing with this concept is we are attacking the flat level defender. And the flat level defender in cover three is the second defender in, okay? Basically, he can never be right. If he stays in this area to get in the window of the slant, then we can throw the flat, right? The flat will be wide open. If he 
widens with the flat, then this area is open for us to throw the slant. And that's what we're doing with this particular concept. So what we're gonna do, we know it's single high, so I call this particular play. I'm gonna read this second defender in. I, I don't care about this defender here. He's just not in the picture. We're gonna read the second defender in and what he does dictates where the ball goes. We snap the ball, we're watching this player, and right here, when he widens like that, now we know we can hit it right in this window right here. Now, when I run this play, I always attack away from the running back. Okay, and the reason why that is, is because um, just a spacing factor. I'm not going to get too deep into detail with that. It'll get a little bit too technical. But you want to attack from away from the number three. So we're going to attack the one, two side away from the back when we are throwing this particular concept. Okay, so I go no huddle and I continue with the scheme. He stays in single high. That's fine. And look what happens with this scheme okay you notice how he calls a timeout if you start doing this stuff you're gonna get guys who calls timeout during drives because now look he's in double high right so let me go to another uh, play here and this will be actually cover one man it's still single high and again we attack away from the back read the second defender in he widens so then we throw that slant to the outside now I want you to pay attention to something here I flip back to the first play that I went over okay and do you see a difference this is how you can read whether or not it's cover three man I mean cover three zone or cover one man look at the even spacing on the second level I'm gonna show it one more time so you can see it this is one of the benefits of spread offenses you notice how the second level is evenly spaced out across the second level right that is a key to knowing that it's zone and if it's single high zone it's always cover three right but here look at this you notice how they are not evenly spread out right why is that because they're in man-to-man -man coverage and that's how you can tell between cover three zone and cover one man from certain formations now so cover three zone um, again and that's the beauty of this concept it the read post snap remains the same you're just reading that second defender in. we're gonna do it here you see how that second defender in widens right so now I know I throw the slant if he sits and he doesn't widen then what do I do then you throw to the flat right now when the defense is in man-to-man -man cover one man then those outside corners are a lot less conservative yeah they play conservative to a degree However, they are in man-to-man -man coverage, so they will be a lot more stickier. So that's why that's when you got to uh, compare matchups, right? If you have a bona fide corner on the opposite of a scrub receiver, and it's some type of cover one man, then you may want to shy away from running this, you know. And that's pretty, you know, that's 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 something you want to keep in mind because you can call this concept against single high um, if you have good receivers and you like the matchups on the outside and it won't bother you if uh, they're playing man or zone you're just gonna read the second defender in no matter what because you know your guys on the outside can beat man-to-man -man coverage if it's cover one man however if you have matchup issues on the outside uh, and you have a corner that can dominate your receiver and read the route then you may want to shy away from running this at all because you don't want to get in a situation to where you think it's cover three zone, you snap the ball and it's cover one man, and now it muddies up your read just like that, right? So you may not believe me, but I'm telling the truth. I remember when I did this on this particular play, and I knew that I should not have thrown this concept against this player here, okay? Now, the reason why I checked into it, I don't remember why, but it was single high. I probably ran levels divide a little bit too much, and I wanted to check into a single high beating play. So I check into this play and I wanted to move the back to the other side so I can attack on the wide side here. But I just did not like the matchup issue that we have with the corner and the wide receiver. But I'm like, you know what? You're going to have to win sometimes. And this is the issue you can get into if you run into matchup issues on the outside and they are actually in cover one man. So you have to keep that in mind. So I could have shown you many clips where we actually go to the flat. Uh, but it would take too long for me to dig through all the files. So this is an example of, of that. I see single high. They look 
evenly spread out, right? So it's probably zone. Again, it doesn't matter. We're reading the second defender in, and you notice how he kind of sits. He steps outside a bit, but then he stays in the window of the flat. So, I mean, in the window of the slant, I should say. So we throw the flat. And look at how that's cover three sky. Look at how throwing a simple flat route, you still get 10 yards, right? Because, again, it's, it's all about passing concepts in the passing game. This scheme... You know, this concept against single high, you just make it to where there's a defender in conflict and he's just never right. There's nothing he can do to ever be right. And that's how you win in football. You win by getting a numerical advantage. You get your two on ones, you get your three on twos, you get your four on threes, your five on fours, etc. To where there's somebody there who's in conflict who can never be right, right? You don't win in football just by going one-on-one -on -one the entire time. Because what happens if you run into somebody who's better than you uh, on the talent uh, side of things, right? To where their guy is just better than yours, okay? You can't just draw up stuff to where just beat that guy, right? That's where you run into problems. You wanna find ways to manipulate um, against coverages. You wanna find ways to create space in uh, creative ways but I mean the biggest thing is getting your numerical advantages I mean it comes to the passing game um, the running game pass protection it's all about getting an advantage against your opponent whether it be by scheme um, etc so I'll leave it at that guys I mean so that's play number two um, again this is it's really the dragon concept but they call it uh, quick slants in the playbook um, I wish we could change the way that they call these plays but it is what it is but it's the dragon concept it's called quick slants and this is another weapon in the toolbox and uh, i hope you continue sticking around to dig out my scheme